Let's go to God in prayer. Oh God, I have so much on my heart today. I know you know all things, Lord, and that you're here present with us. I want to thank you that you have brought me through the highways and byways so that I can be here today. The rain caught up with us, the torrents of the rain you protected us and got us home safely you lord have been watching over this church this congregation this world and this time we sometimes forget how great you are we sometimes just let our day-to-day -day existence dictate what we do for the day and dictate who we serve. Forgive us for our follies. Forgive us for taking our eyes off you, Lord. And we want to take this opportunity to thank you for never giving up on us, for always being there for us when we are not there with you. So we come now before your throne of grace, O oh Lord, as I attempt to bring the word I ask that my voice be used as your voice and not my own make me worthy to be able to speak your words make me be able to be a real disciple of yours I want to serve you Lord in all honesty and in truth, we all do. So now we come before you, Lord. Bless this time. Bless this sermon. Bless this church, the ecumenical church worldwide. And we thank you. I'd like for us to get some significance from the psalm 130 that I have chosen today. As I did the lectionary readings, I often look at what touches me in my life at the time and what touches me that's significant for our lives when I read the lectionary scripture. So this one kind of just stayed on my heart. And I've come with this title of the sermon, A Call for Hope. This is a significant psalm, as most of them are. But in Bible times, this, the Psalms, the book of Psalms itself, was the closest thing the Jews had to a hymn book. These words put to music were sang often in worship as they came in the sanctuary to praise and worship God. And so I kind of thought about the importance of understanding the Psalms. So I'm gonna go over that some, but I've had my heart heavy over the last few weeks when I look at the news, which I've gotten to where I'm not enjoying much anymore because it's always something negative, something bad. But what resonated in my being most were the people who we were surprised to see or hear about who took their own life. These famous people who seem to have so much going for themselves. These people who seemingly had wealth, prestige, had made it to the top 
in their particular disciplines took their lives in moments of despair, in moments of pain and suffering. We don't know the full story. We don't know exactly why they did what we did. We may never know. It's not for us to know. But when I look at that and I read the psalm and I look at the expressions of emotions and the experiences that God gives us in his work that he's put together in the psalms, we need to go back and make the psalm a part of our worship a part of our life, we should read, study, and understand that the Psalms are expressions of emotions and experiences. It talks about the joys and the sorrows of life. It talks about our cares and the complaints of life. It talks about despair, and it talks about everything about human life and society. It talks about our circumstances. It talks about everything that we need and deal with in life. And so Psalm 130 is such a thing that is an expression of faith. It is a resignation that we take to God and we take in God's presence. Mostly is an expression of worship. In other words, the Psalms are an expression of humankind. It is our heart toward God in the various situations of life. It's our fears. It's our doubts. It's our sorrows and our tragedies and our despair. It is about our triumphs, our joys, and our hopes in our praise. We have pilgrim psalms. We have songs of accents, which the accent songs are, at times we hear that the Israelites refer to going up to Jerusalem. When they go up to the festivals of um, the unleavened bread or Pentecost or the times of atonement, so some songs were written do that, during that time as songs of pilgrim songs as they went to the different going up to Jerusalem celebrations. Unfortunately, the poetry, which is Hebrew poetry of these songs, are poetries that are reflections of life cast in poetic forms. Poetry is something that we're beginning to get away from in our society. We don't particularly care for poetry too much today. The poetry that I hear in songs seem to be the hip hop lyrics. Don't seem to be positive all the time. They talk about their life. They talk about expressing of experiences but what substance do they bring to our life? I don't know. I don't listen to them too often, I must admit. But there are, in these psalms, man's response to God. These psalms are to be used in public, and they are psalms that are prayers words that are directed to God. And so what I want you to understand that the Psalms are petitions to God. The Psalms are praises to God. The Psalms are praises and it's a praise, which is I would call when you think of music, the keynote to scripture. Praise in the Psalms are keynotes to scripture. The Psalms were very much aware of God's hand in history. They were aware of God in history and God in their life. Yeah. And so God makes himself present to them in the midst of history 
because God was in their life and always foremost in their thoughts and in their life. God to them as a psalmist was there to help his people. God was there in times to bless his people. God was there always in the times of adversity. So the Psalms, we should listen. The psalm speaks to us. The Psalms are for us. And the Psalms are where we go when we want to cry out in the depths of our beings and our souls. The Psalms are there for us. And this is what the Psalms teach us. I want you to think about how you express your relationship with God. How has your faith touched your heart? What emotions, as you convey in your worship of God, do you bring in the spirit and truth of your life? I want you to remember all creation sings to God. All creation should worship God. Let all living creations give glory and honor and thanks to God who gives us all that we need and all that we have and is the God who sits on the throne of our life. This is what I get from reading the Psalms, for understanding what it brings to us, that it is a central part of our life. We always go to the Psalm when we're troubled, when we're burdened down, when we don't know what to do next. We don't go and kill ourselves and take our life if we know God in his fullness because God is there for us in all the things that we have to deal with in our life. We get to get this out to the world that God is present. Just hold on and wait for the Lord for God keeps his promises never to forsake us, never to leave us, even when we don't deserve it. Even when we go our separate way, God keeps his promises. God is there for us. Psalm 130 tells us to be human is to have trouble. Job said it. Man is born to trouble as sparks fly upward. Suffering. Suffering comes to all of us. We can't avoid it. We can't get away from it. We don't know when it's coming, but we all have or will at some point suffer in our lifetime. Suffering isn't something we enjoy. Suffering is painful. Pain, pain threatens our well-being. Psalm 130, y'all. Psalm 130 grapples. It grapples mightily with suffering. It sings its way through it. Psalm 130 gives us experiences for those who are committed to traveling the way of faith to God through Jesus Christ. The psalmist begins his psalm in pain. Do y'all understand that? Do y'all get that? Are you just reading something? Oh, it sounds pretty. It sounds nice. Oh, it sounds sad. But Psalm 130 starts with, out of the depths, I have cried to you, O oh Lord. Lord, please hear my voice. Lord, please don't turn a deaf ear to me. Lord, let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, that means if you, Lord, count our sins, if you, Lord, 
Look at how much we forsake you, how much we don't do what we need to do in your will. Lord, you don't keep account of it. Think about it. But Lord, if you do, we can't stand. If you count our betrayals, our unfaithfulness, we don't have a leg to stand on. So the psalmist goes to God. He cries out in the depths of whatever he is experiencing, whatever he's suffering, whatever he has done. And what does he do? He doesn't take it to his neighbor. He doesn't take it to his family. He goes to God. He says, out of the depths I have cried to you, Lord, that I need you, Lord. Pay attention to me. I am suffering. I'm in pain. I'm in torment. I am in misery. I have heartache. I am in despair. When we are in despair, who is the better place person to take it to? No one but God. Suffering in the psalm is set openly. It is set passionately before God. It is acknowledged. He's telling me. I'm expressing it. I'm telling you what I'm going through. It is described and it is lived. And so this is something we need to understand that has been given to us in Scripture, in the Word, how to bring everything to God, no matter what it is, even if we're depressed to the max. Even if we feel like we can't live anymore because of our pain physically or emotionally, we need to give it to God. We need to hold on. We need to understand that if we give it to God, there is hope. The intensity of this song tells us we are at the heart of things. The psalm expressed directly before God if we search clo closer, this psalm and this message is saying that God is deeper than the deepest depth of man. So when he cries to the depth, this man knows that God is deeper than the deepest depth. He is holier than our deepest sin is deep. There is no depth so deep to us as when God reveals his holiness comes in dealing with our sin and with our sorrows and with our suffering. God is revealed in his holiness in dealing with our sin. God has covered our sin and has given us a blessing in the life and death and suffering of Jesus Christ. It's a done deal. We're going to suffer, but we're going to get through it. We're going to suffer, but we need to understand who to give it to. We need to just hold on. The worst thing is to have no God to cry to, to have no God to give our pain and our anguish. That's the worst thing, and that is the thing that some people do not understand and do not have. We can go to God. The psalm teaches us to respond to suffering is a reality. We are not to deny our suffering. We are to face it. We, as Christian believers who have claimed to know God, we need to learn to face it with faith. We need to learn not to avoid it. We need to daily bring our woes to God. We need to recognize them and do not suppress them. We don't find quick cures, quick fixes for suffering. We shouldn't listen to people who tell us to get over it. 
take it like a man, take it like a woman, take a vac vacation, take a day off, take a chill pill. Suffering should be held up to God. It needs to be proclaimed and prayed. Proclaim and pray whatever is going on in our life. We're not here to say that we're celebrating suffering, but we are to take our suffering to God. God is our strength and our redeemer in all times. He is our help. In the psalm eight times, eight times the name of God is used in the psalm. As we go to God in our suffering, God is the one who forgives God forgives us. God forgives us. God forgives us for whatever we have done. We confess our sins before him. He promises he will forgive. God is steadfast. God's love is plenteous. So we wait and we hope on God. We get one other thing, redemption. We get redemption from our sin. Mm -hmm.